Hi, my name is Stefan. I'm the producer of the uh, modest but very interesting piano sample library called the Union Grant. While I'm on my well-deserved vacation here on beautiful Corfu Island, I thought I'd take this opportunity to tell you a bit about the history of this library. So, the Union Grand actually starts back in the early 90s, you know, and I'm still a little wet behind the ears, but one day I find myself co-producing a fan song for the national soccer team of Japan called the Red Diamonds. And this is at Union Studios in Munich, the top address for music production, and <laughs> boy, I am psyched. So here I am in this control room is a little intimidating almost, you know, but of course I'm also very excited to be there. In fact, I have to be careful not to drool on this console. This is an impressive SSL desk with total recall. We have two 24-track studio decks synced, you know, this racks and racks loaded with gear and I have no clue what half the stuff does. And on my left is the window with the recording studio behind it. I can't even see the whole room, you know, but during a break, I push open that big heavy door and I'm like, wow. This is where Deep Purple recorded their stuff, and Queen, and Tears for Fears, and all these guys. I mean, this is almost like a religious experience to be stepping into that room, which is huge. You could easily put a full orchestra in there with choir. And I'm fascinated by the sound. You know, this is not at all like being in a concert hall or something. This room is actually quite dry. Not dead, you know, of course it is live, but, you know, it has that magical, airy, you know, transparent, you know, expensive recording studio kind of tone that you only get in these big expensive studios. And there's this piano, so I'm like, ah, let's check this baby out. This is a Yamaha Grand Piano. <laughs> that thing is something else. You know, it goes like this. Bang! <laughs> Seriously. I mean, I cannot believe how loud and powerful this instrument is. I mean, when I was a music student, I played on so many different instruments. I've never heard anything like this in my entire life. <laughs> this thing is like a volcano. It's like it's like listening to acute monitors, you know, that's how bright and punchy this thing is. I'm starting to play louder and louder and as I'm getting excited. And pretty soon my hands and arms are sore, but I can't stop banging on this instrument. And then somebody comes in and says, you know, what the hell are you doing, you know, we're waiting for you. Anyway, you know, I decide right then, you know, <laughs> I want that sound at home. I'm going to sample that thing. And the next day I come in very early before anybody shows up and I secretly bring my portable dad machine. And I sample the way we sampled at the time. We were recording in minor thirds. I mean, we had to save memory. Now, that way, most of the notes are distorted by a semitone, which isn't all that bad, but dynamic linear. We're still in this two layer age. I mean, all we ever record is loud notes and soft notes. You want something in between? I'm sorry, we don't have it. We just cheat a little, you know, by fading between these two layers. I only want the loud notes anyway. <laughs> No, of course, I record the loud and the soft notes, but by the time I'm finished, uh, you can do the math, you know, I've recorded just about 58 piano samples, which sounds a little silly today. I mean, we have more variations in the bloody pedal noises now. But even so, you know, later at home, I realize I still can put that stuff in my sampler, and that thing is fully loaded, but all the samplers max out at like 32 megabytes at the time, and memory is bloody expensive means you have to launch another stage of memory savings baloney, you know, which is looping, and that's the worst of them. You're pretending the sound is louder, uh, longer than it actually is by repeating it over and over again. And that's not only bad for the sound, but you know, if you never tried yourself looping a harmonically complex, you know, decaying sound like a piano, <laughs> this is like a Chinese torture. I mean. To be sitting there listening to the same tiny fraction of audio all day long, you know, ding, 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 ding. I mean, your mind starts playing tricks on you while you're trying to dial in, you know, a single half decent loop point. Then you got 57 left to go, so all of a sudden, I'm not so excited about this project anymore. And pretty soon that tape is in a big box somewhere, you know, with some other ones labeled to do. But, you know, many years later, though, I found yet another audio editor, and this one finally takes out some of the drudgery of this repetitive, you know, naming, mapping, layering business that you have to deal with when working with samples. So of course I look in my archives to see what else I can finally turn into, you know, useful, actually playable instruments, because I collected so much stuff and I find that tape again. Yeah, I remember doing that thing, you know, let's see. Yeah. So I dumped that whole thing into the editor and that takes me right back to that early morning at Union Studios. 
it would have been great if I'd recorded a little more stuff for the hell of it while I was at it. But, you know, at the same time, I'm surprised how much of the character of that instrument is actually preserved. And not only that, you know, even though I close my I can hear that beautiful, beautiful room of Union Studio on these samples. So great, you know, I can now fine-tune everything. And I mean, my memory is cheap, you know, I don't even have to bother looping the stuff. <clears throat> I can actually finish that project. And so now, you know, if I need a bright in your face sort of rock and roll piano sample with all the gigabyte guzzling libraries we now have that actually tend to be on the soft side for the most part, I mean, that is the one I try first. But, you know, you don't have to take my word for it. You can just go to my website, you know, rootsounds.com and listen to the demos. Or just download the whole thing and try it yourself. You know, this is now a free library and I'm giving it away. And my hope would be you find this useful. And it ends up, you know, on your own songs, your own music. So there you have it. You know, I'm taking a long time here. But before I switch off that camera, I want to answer the one obvious question you might have about the library. And that is, well, you know, if that thing is so great, then why are you giving us these 58 samples instead of going back in there and recording, you know, 58,000 of them? Well, <coughs> Union Studio, <laughs> I mean, you won't believe this, but that whole building, you know, with all these fantastic rooms, you know, three studios, in fact, was nothing more than a tax write-off project. You know, it, it got built, you know, all this fabulous stuff was recorded, all this amazing talent walked in and out, but the minute that thing was written off, you know, they kicked everybody out and tore the whole thing down. And now there's you know, a bloody office building in its place, which is absolutely ridiculous. So that piano probably found a new home somewhere, I'm not sure what happened to it, but that room is no longer there. And that makes me even more happy you know, that I managed to preserve you know, that minuscule amount of the studio on the Union Grand Library. You know, not that I'm on a mission or anything, but it's actually cool to think, you know, that being a free download, you know, we, we get tracks popping up here and there that use that sound, in a way would help to keep that bit of Union Studios alive. Mm -hmm.